Welcome to how to make a line graph in Excel 2007. What you want to do first is open Excel, find your A1, B1, C1 cells. What you want to put in A1 is the title of your x-axis. So let's say our x-axis is time in seconds. And our b-axis will be height in feet. I'm going to go ahead and put some time values here. I will give you a few seconds to do this also. Let's say we have a man hang gliding off a building. He climbed to the top of the bank, and he thought it'd be fun to hang glide down to the park. Let's say this bank is 200 feet tall. Not a very tall bank, but it'll work. And we know that it took him 10 seconds to get to the ground, so it's zero. Now we're going to go in 20 foot increments down to zero. If you're following along, I'll give you a few moments to type in these values, and if not, well, you get to watch me type the title of our graph, which will be Rate of Descent. Once you've got all your values typed in, X values under the A column, Y values under the B column, highlight all of your values, X and Y. Come up here to the top and click Insert. Now when you click Insert, you'll, you'll see a few things. You'll see a table, which we already have. You'll see Insert, Clip Art, Picture, Shapes, Smart Art. We don't want any of that. We want charts right here. You can have column graphs, line graphs, pie graphs, bar graphs, an area graph, scatter plots, or these other charts, which are strange and I haven't found uses for yet. Now, you can go with a line graph, which I haven't figured out how to work yet, and it doesn't seem to work any better than a scatter plot, with points being connected, of course. So what I'm going to use for this tutorial is a scatter plot with straight lines and bars. If you have your values highlighted, you go through the insert, go to scatter plot, and then click this one here, scatter with straight lines and markers. It's going to generate a graph for us, and we're going to move it over here. What you want to do first is, you'll see there's no title. Well, what are we going to do about that? We're going to go up here to layout, and we're going to click chart title. And you can have your title one of two ways. You can have it in the graph, here, or you can have it above the graph, there. I like mine up the graph, so that's where it's going to stay. If you like it elsewhere, feel free. We can even put it right behind the chart if we feel like. We can put it pretty much wherever we please. I'm going to stick it right up here at the top. Now, if someone was looking at this graph, they wouldn't be able to take much information from it. Rate of descent. Okay, what does that mean? Are they? Did they throw something? Is a ball falling from the sky? Is a plane crashing? Is a man paragliding off a bank? Possibly. What you want to do is you want to define your x and y axis. So you're going to go to layout again, axis titles, click primary horizontal axis title, and click title below axis. This is going to give us a little text box here, which we can fill in as time in seconds. If you want to label your y axis, which you do, you're going to want to go to axis titles, primary vertical axis title, and you have one of three choices, aside from no title at all. You can have the rotated title, which is sideways, like this. You can have the vertical title, which is stacked, like this. Or you can have the horizontal title. I prefer horizontal, so I'm going to keep mine like this. Feel free to use whichever makes you happy. Now, that's great time and height, but what does this line mean? So we're going to define this line. We're going to right click this box here and click select data. It'll bring up the select data source window. Series 1 is what our graph is called right now. What you want to do is click series 1, click edit, and you'll see series name. We will name our line. And we will have, let's name it Bob's Hang Glider. This looks right. And then you click this little box next to it and it confirms it. Confirm again. There you go. Bob's hang glider. 
click OK again. Now anyone that looks at this graph will know that this line represents Bob's hang glider. So at six seconds, Bob's hang glider was what looks to be about 80 feet from the ground. Now you see what I just did there? I had to kind of guess what this was here, this value here. I can look at and know that 680, 6 comma 80 is a point on our graph because I have the table in front of me. But what if someone's just looking at this graph and they have to they have to look with their eyes and kind of map things out? Well, what you can do to make it easier for them is go up here to layout and click grid lines. You have horizontal grid lines and vertical grid lines. Major grid lines are these increments we've defined: two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. If I go major horizontal grid lines, I mean major vertical grid lines, you see these increments get mapped out. Now, that still doesn't help me define maybe this point here. It looks to be about five and a half. What about five and a half seconds? It's a time. It has a value. We have it mapped on this chart. We just don't know what that is. So we're going to go to minor grid lines as well. And that gives us our vertical grid lines. So it looks 5.5 .5 is, in fact, connected to a point right here. But we still can't tell where that corresponds to the vertical axis. So we're going to go in horizontal grid lines. And we're going to do minor grid lines. And now we have this nice grid that we can put a straight edge against or even trace with our finger and we can follow that at 5.5 .5 seconds he was going he was about 90 feet in the air which if we look at our table is accurate but 5 and 6 is in fact 90 using these combinations of things you can pretty much do anything you need to do in my next tutorial Excel 2007 Advanced Line Graphs, or whatever I'm going to decide to name it. I'm going to show you how to work with trend lines for graphs that are not quite so linear. How to play with the legends if you have a bunch of variables to define. How to label things, like if you have columns in a graph and you need to label each column as a separate variable. You can do that. But that's for next video. So, thank you for watching. Please rate and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future how-to videos, you can comment this video, reply with a video asking me to do a video, or you can message me directly through my YouTube account. I usually respond fairly quickly, and I don't have much to do, so I will probably get around to making you a video fairly quickly. Thanks for watching, and I hope I helped.